Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Galita, and it's a pleasure being tonight with all of you because, well, we have prepared an extraordinary show as every Tuesday showing you the best of Latin America. So, well, first of all, I just want to ask you if you can follow us in all our social networks. Here we have Instagram. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, don't forget to put the bell, as well as if you are here watching us uh, on Facebook, put the bell that is at the right, that is a, when we are just broadcasting live, in order that you know every time that we're forecasting a new video. Remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. London time. And well, before we start the show, and of course, after you give us a like and you share this video with more people in order that they know what are we doing. Let me tell you that, well, we are going to talk about the incredible Bolivia. So, well, we're going to talk about Bolivia and also we're going to have a little bit of music that, well, I would like to say thank you very much to Edwin Soria, that, well, he is a part of the band that is a Hawaii band. So, we're going to listen to a little bit of music traditional from Bolivia that is really, really good. And also they are based here in London. So you will learn more about what is the music from Bolivia. And also uh, we are going to talk a lot about, about Lucha Britannia. What is Lucha Britannia? So well, if you have seen the Lucha Libre, so maybe you will have an idea. And also if you watch the promo, believe me that you're going to enjoy it because this is happening here in the UK. And we're going to know more about what is Lucha Britannia. If you haven't had the opportunity to go to these events that they are just outstanding, you will know more tonight about what is this. So I would like to say hello to mis amigos, Whitney Michele, no? Hello everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed the sun. You're more than five minutes of sunlight today in London. I know I did. And I'm excited to start the show. Brilliant. That's Thank nice. you very much, Whitney. <laughs> and on the other side, we have Roger Alarcón. Well, hello. I bet you you missed me the last week. <laughs> but... We have just a, a couple of issues, to be honest. <laughs> I think uh, it was the the most. Technical issues. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I, I know, but I was doing something really interesting, which I, I will talk later about it. Yeah, exactly. And that's the reason why Roger, he was uh, not on the show last week, but he's going to give us a summary about what he was doing. And also it's important because all of you are invited to this event that he was working on. And first we have the picture of the week. Which one is the picture of yeah, the week? Yeah, the picture of the week. Guess what? Look at that amazing. This weekend, the Mexican Sergio Perez won the Grand Prix of Baku, Azerbaijan. Well, congratulations, a Latin American. And uh, all of us, we need to be proud because he's open. Uh, we open places for the rest of the Latin Americans. That's really good. And also, well, we have a uh, different news for all of you because, well, we are going to have, you know, that in the Latin America show, we are, we are bringing you the best of different countries. And talking about Mexico, it's like, remember that, well, we're going to have four episodes. Well, it's going to be a section because you know that normally in the Latin America show, we used to talk about two topics or more than two topics. So, well, one of the topics that, topics that we're going to talk uh, across four different episodes is going to be an extraordinary state in Mexico, call it. Uh, instead that I tell you what are we going to have, let's better watch the video.
Well, that is the video that we're going to talk about Yucatan, this extraordinary state in Mexico that, well, you will have the opportunity to know more about uh, the ruins, the Mayans, that, well, is like the very well known across the world. So, well, we're going to talk more about the ruins, the culture, the gastronomy. So, well, we're going to have a group of experts and also the Minister of Tourism uh, of that state, that is Yucatan, that, well, they are going to explain us and they are going to let us know more about this fantastic state that we have in Mexico and all the nature. And as you have seen, this is landscapes and these places. So maybe it's going to be in your list of places that you would like to visit once the lockdown will be lifted. Uh, but we are we are on the way. So well, it's like we can see the, the the light at the end of the tunnel now. So well, that's really good. And um, what else do we have? Uh, here, something that I'm missing, Roger? With you? No. So I think nope. so. I'm going to put my mic my my mic in. Mute because if not, you know that well, someone is going to complain. And actually, Roger, good thing is like you are here next to me now, so you are not down, so that's good. So, well, now we can like have a proper conversation, like if we will be in a class, and let's go. Yeah, exactly. To the section. Well, if you're going to do that, then can you put your microphones on mute and disable your cameras? <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you're gonna have the conversation you know use use the phone yes thank you okay perfect okay wonderful thank you so much oh, my dear colleagues okay um all right so everyone we are going to go over something that we've started before <sighs> my patience is so thin all right that we've started before and we didn't totally finish. So we're going to do it again. Um, and one of those things is numbers. So um, numbers are really important for a lot of reasons, especially for tourists. If you're not studying the language and you have no use to, to use them for like dates or facts or information like my students might have to for exams and whatnot. For numbers, uh, for tourists, numbers are really good when it comes to for example, phone number, the time, the date, um, things like that. So it's pretty integral. Um, paying a bill, for example, if they say it out loud. So we're going to start going over the numbers. And, and, and the whole plan is to go over how to say the date and use them with saying time as well in the next few segments and just build our way up. Normally, I do numbers to 0 through 30 and then do the date. And we did that already. So today, I just want to go over the, the numbers 0 through 30 and then build up to 60, and then we can start with the time and then go back and review the date. So that's what's gonna be on the agenda for the next few sections. So instead of just telling you about it, we're just gonna do it. Okay, and I have a different background because I did this a long time ago. So here are our first few numbers. Thank you, Google, for um, all the images I got to steal. Um, so you have one through 10 or zero through 10. You have cero, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, Siete, ocho, nueve, diez. So those are numbers zero through 10. We've gone over them before. Remember the A, E, I, O, U. Okay, this is what I, actually what I start with my students. After doing the alphabet, I start with numbers because it's the best way to build up. So cero, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Okay, and that's important because building off this, you're gonna need these numbers for when you do the majority of all other numbers. However, when you start getting to the, to the teens, okay, and, and the preteens, like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, those are their own numbers, but they look kind of similar. So you have the ones on the left, one through 10, and the ones on the right, which are the new ones. And those are 11, 12, okay, 12, like 2, 13, Okay, so that's 13, 14, 14, and then 15, 15, which you probably have heard um, because of quinceanera. And then you start getting the SE. So there are a couple ways to write this. The one that's in this picture is one of them. The other one is the letter S space E, like Y, Y, and then the number. So either one is fine, but these are the ones that I found. So you have the S says, that's one of three numbers with accents, um, 17, 18, 19, 20. So those are numbers one through 20. So I'll go over the, the 11 through 20. 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, and that's 15. And then now we go for 10 and 16 for 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Then when you go from 20 on, okay, this is interesting too. It's very similar to what we saw in the last one. It's 20 e with the I and then the next number, okay? So 21, 22, 23, okay? And the ones in bold are the ones are with, that have accents. So 16 and then those three numbers that you see here, 22, 23, and 26, have accents on the last vowel before the S. That's how you can think of it. And that's because we emphasize them. So we have 27, 28, 29, 30, okay? And that's how you do numbers one through 20. Again, it's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it's 20 e plus the number, okay? And then finally, for any sort of number moving up, moving on from there within like 30 and 99, it's literally the number. So if 30, well, 30 is 30, and I want to say 31, it'd be 30 y uno, as you see below right there. Um, and that's how we write the rest of the number. So if I want to say um, 34, 34. If I want to say 42, well, 40 is 40 and two is dos, so 42. If I want to say 55, 55, because 50 is 50. Now look at the difference between 40, 50. I've said this a billion times, but even some of my um, higher level students will sometimes make the mistake. A C before an A, O, or U makes a K sound, but a C in front of a, a an E or an I, like 50 makes an S sound, 50. And then we have 60, which is 60. So again, 30, 40, 50, 60. And if I want to say 58, 58, 59, 59, okay? And those are how you do numbers zero through 60. And that's all I have for right now because I want to build on that. So next time we're going to go over how to tell time and use numbers zero through 60 because that's something you're going to want as a tourist as well. That's it. Well, actually, actually, the numbers, they are pretty easy. Because it's like, as you were saying, you just need to understand the root and later on you're copying, if you want to say, from one to nine. Yeah, it's not like certain romance languages like French, where it's like, to say 80, it's four and tw times 20, or, you know, like oh, well, yeah, 76, that, that's which is 60 and six, 16. It's not really a math, like, you don't, you're not doing mathematics, like other romance languages. It's very, very clear. It's just the numbers, the preteens to 16, and then 20 to 30, which has the I and combine the ones together for 16 till 29. So after that, it gets a lot easier. So next time, like I said, we're gonna build up on them. Numbers are the best way to start learning Spanish. They're short, they're quick, they're easy. Basically, they are like quite similar, like how we have them in English. Yeah, like yeah I never structure. start with, yeah. Whenever I teach, I mean, it's been forever since I taught Spanish one but I never start with greetings ever, which every teacher does. And I think it's such a faux pas because how can you explain greetings and pronouncing all these words when it's a totally new language? So you always start with alphabet, then numbers, and then build your way up to greetings. Very handy and very useful. Yeah. Anyway, so that's well, it's why, like, that's why you have me teach and you are you going to <laughs> ask the, what is your, to the audience, what is your age? <laughs> Let's see if we can say it's a little wide <laughs> though. We only 25, got it. 25. Sí, gracias. 25. 25 para mí. Para ti mucho. Dos veces. Dos veces. Ah, <laughs> no, of course not. Dos veces. Yeah. Veces is time. So two times. Now we're doing math. Okay. No, 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 not like that. Right, but 50. Yeah, but I think it's... Tiene 50 años. Sí. ¿Qué crema utilizas? I'd love to know. <laughs> Because you I'm look 25. Great. I am 25. It's 35. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. If you and I'm want a natural to, blonde. Well, <laughs> actually, if you want to avoid wrinkles, it's very easy. Just get a little bit fat, and you're not going to have wrinkles. If you, want get, if you don't want to get wrinkles, don't work on the Latin America show or gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's he's, why. He's yeah. look at look at this one look at his hair. This one, look at his hair. This one is this. Yeah, I know. 
I didn't yeah, see but it. I cannot you know, show you because I was very hey, show, show us yours, Roger. I'm gonna do this. Show us yours, Roger. <laughs> That's it. I covered it. He totally. Here are my gray hair. Oh, I don't have any. I don't have gray hairs. He's the only I don't one. Either. Redheads, we blonde. We go blonde. We don't go gray. Well, Listen, I'm well. not going to see the gray hairs, to be honest. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> sure you will not. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't need to take care of that. So, so enjoy it me while you have it. No? Yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> So, well, I would like to say thank you very much first uh, to Whitney and to the audience that they are watching us tonight. So I can see Abhijit uh, that was saying hola, le Latin America team. Uh, well, Latin America. Uh, Elsvieta, who is saying good evening, uh, everyone. Everyone, an amazing Bolivia, the Tibet of the Americas. Yeah, well, we will talk about a little bit more about that extraordinary place. Uh, also, Liliana, who is with us, so hello, Liliana, Abhijit, that is saying very warm day. Yes, of course, indeed, it's a very nice weather that we have here in London. Finally, uh, all the, I think, a couple of weeks that we have had a really fantastic weather. We have Joshua that is here with us also. Hello, nuestro amigo Joshua. Uh, 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 our friends from Jaramillo Cafe, they are here, so they are saying beating, say hello. Sridham, that well, he's going to be with us in a couple of minutes and he's going to tell us more about this place in Bolivia that believe the, the mirror of the world. So it's like just beautiful. Uh, new background. Yes, of course, yes. we have new backgrounds. Uh, good afternoon is Mateo. Ah, Mateo, our friend from Peru. Hi, Mateo. Yes, uh, I know that well, we have been texting. Yeah, sorry, Whitney. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for the age, posting the age, Liliana and El Tibeta. Uh, I was going to ask that today, like, ¿cuántos años tienes? But I thought that might be too rude. That was going to be my my little, like, interactive. But, but you know. why? I, that's interesting, Whitney. Why they are saying that it's rude, saying your age? Why no, I'm mean? saying it's rude. No, but no, no, but I, I'm thanking everyone else for it's well apparently according to my British friends it is rude to ask someone's age at least in this country. Really? Yes. So and I when I'm submitting it and last it, minute, I thought mm -mm, I'm not asking. <laughs> this will cut it out. So, so thank you. Yes, thank you so, for including that in the comments because that's what I was thinking. You read my mind. Okay. So what happened with? If well, we need Enrique, to know his age. Oh, well, that because Enrique, you know, mutes us, like make, makes faces during my classes. I'm so. not, I'm Is never mute you. La venganza, revenge. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Okay. Thank you. I try. Well, anyway, we have a supporter from your side that is Ramona that she's saying that mute, mute them. So I know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, she's a teacher, so she understands you perfectly. Ah, uh, that's why you are suffering. Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet. So I well, bet you she want to. She she have a, 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 some students like you. And oh, me. I wish I could take <laughs> remote control students and just mute. Oh. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you, Whitney. <laughs> anyway, so while well, it's like, uh, please let us know, all the people that they are watching us, let us know if you can share with us your age or just let us know where are you from or where are you based and where are you watching us. And on the other side, well, I think it's time to go. Do you remember that? Well, I told you that our friend Edwin Soria from uh, Hawaii Band, uh, he provided us a couple of videos of music from Bolivia. So let's start having the mood before we talk about Bolivia. So over you, Roger. Flor de mi vida, mi palomita, mi cochalita, de mi yatita, flor de mi vida, mi palomita. No lo mueves tu pollerita en este baile zapateadita. No lo 
mueves tu pollerita en este baile sin mateadito. Cantarás, bailarás, toda la noche disfrutarás. Cantarás, bailarás, toda la noche disfrutarás. Sin mateadita, no sabida, como lo bailas este salai. Sin mateadita, no sabida, como lo bailas este salai. Well, they are our friends from uh, Hawaii. The 12 is like an extraordinary music. Yes. Well done, Whitney. Yes. Yes. Glapping. And well, it's like before we go to discover more about Bolivia, let's go to with our first guest that I think so you're going to introduce him. Right, Roy? Well, our next guest, Gary van der Hoorn, is an amazing and extraordinary uh, trainer. He's got the London School of Lucha Libre. He's been in many of the main events here in London of Lucha Libre. He brings the show, the spectacle, the spectacle of Lucha Libre to all the people of, of, of London. So it's a really honor to have today uh, Gary van der Horn, please welcome. Hello. Hello. Well, excuse me. How are you, Gary? I'm very well, thank you. And you guys? Great. Well, it's an honor to have you here, Gary. And obviously, I would love to start this interview. It's not an interview, it's like a normal chat because I know a lot of people that want to know about Lucha Libre. So tell us, since when you did start watching Lucha Libre and how did your journey begin as a professional wrestler? I've always been interested in superheroes and being the best person that I can be and having role models is really important. And very early on in, the, in British TV, there was a, a show made by a guy called Jonathan Ross, very famous British TV person who's become a really good friend and he had a show called the incredibly strange picture show and i saw on that maybe 1990 something like that um 
he did a, an episode on exploitation movies. And in the exploitation movies, I saw Elico de Santo or the original Santo and Blue Demon versus the mummy and Frankenstein and Dracula and the aliens invasion. And, and I saw this stuff, I was like, wow, wrestling in the movies and mass superheroes, real life. So I just dove into it. I was into the, into the British wrestling at that time and I was into the American wrestling at that time. But Lucha Libre, when I saw real life superheroes in masks, that's what really did it. It was like, wow, like it's a new different dimension to things. And I, and I love, I still love those, those old movies from, from the 50s and 60s. And just, just like thinking about like, it's like for our friends as well, they are like non-Spanish speakers. It's like, what is the meaning of lucha? If you, can't, if you can tell them, what, what does that mean? Because also we hear it in the events normally, like people, they start shouting lucha, lucha, lucha. Well, lucha, lucha in itself means fight. So a luchador is a fighter and lucha libre is libre is free. So basically my translation is free fighting or freedom fighters as were the, uh, the Zapatistas and uh, a lot of uh, Mexicans have, have had to, you know, fight for freedom in a certain way. So there's a political thing to it. And I think that whole thing of freedom fighters and fighting for what's good and fighting for what's right is really important in today's society. And the whole psychodrama of playing it out with good versus evil, et cetera, with really high flying flamboyant moves and crazy characters is really good for people. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like that definition, especially the Zapatistas, absolutely. Um, so for those of us who might not know much about wrestling, like myself i apologize can you please explain to us a little bit more like um just like what about wrestling as a sport or a spectacle a spectacle so that people like me and i'm sure others can understand what it what it's about um well professional wrestling as as it's termed is the theatrical side of fighting and it's it's like a morality play It's been around for forever for as, as long as humans have been able to perform for each other and fight for each other. And uh, it's wrestling is one of the oldest sports in the world. Um, obviously it's not to be confused with MMA, which is mixed martial arts, which, which involves some wrestling, but a different type of wrestling or even amateur wrestling or Olympic wrestling, which again, professional wrestling includes that in it, but it's not that, it's a different entity in itself, i.e. it's a spectacle. It's done for the audience. It's done with crazy characters. And it's done with high flying and over the top moves to make it, you know, a, an out of world experience. It's something you just can't see every day. And just talking about that part and just like digging a little bit in that way, it's like, I don't know if you can tell to the audience, like, what is the meaning of, of the mask? Why they are using masks? I think so you said something at the beginning, but it's more like if you can just like elaborate a little bit more about it. Well, the mask adds mystery. It adds that kind of um, 20th century comic book hero villain type thing. You can put on a mask and become someone else. And then you can go take off the mask and become your normal self again. So there's that alter ego kind of thing. Um, obviously not all wrestlers are masked. In fact, like outside of Mexico, most wrestlers are not masked. Lucha Libre is particularly uh, masked. And uh, I, you know, there's, there's reasons for that. I think the, the origins of that, people can research themselves if they want to. There's political reasons and there's financial reasons and there's other reasons. But the, the main thing, the mask is very entrenched in uh, Mexican culture going back in, um, you know, in Cusicoto kind of uh, mask ceremony and the, the carvings and the rituals and stuff like that. There's, in all ancient cultures, there's the ritual of masks. It's, it's not like it's a new thing. It's an old thing that's been transformed into something more exciting and understandable for a modern audience. You, you, you touch something very nice about, <clears throat> about the, the characters and, and, and the mask and everything, and all together make the magic of Lucha Libre. And to, for the people to understand about Lucha, because we always have that question, is that, is that really fighting? 
it was not really fighting. Tell us about what it is. You well, mentioned already it's theatrical. Yeah, well, you yourself have actually been to a training session. So <laughs> you, t you tell everybody how easy it is or how difficult it is. It's up to you. I'm not leading the witness, Your Honor. <laughs> no, it, no, because I, it's exhausting. It's really athletes there, but also a part of the tragical tell us the dangers to be a wrestler. Yeah, it's very, very dangerous. And people see it and, and it's fun. And the, the, you know, the visual excitement is, is there for everybody to see. It takes years and hours and hours and weeks and months and years of training to get good enough to be able to do that, to be able to perform. And you, people really have to dedicate themselves to it. And it is like being a stunt person. It's like being an actor. It's like being an Olympic athlete. And you've got, when you're doing a live show, you've got one chance to get it right. If it goes wrong, everybody sees it. And if it goes very wrong, it can be very dangerous for you as, a, as, as your body or very dangerous for your opponent, for their body, i.e. life-threatening or life-changing. So the skill level involved is huge, huge, huge skill. And, and professional wrestlers should be getting much more um, uh, kudos or props or whatever you want to call it for, for sort of like how hard they work and how much effort they put in to become this good. Because, you know, especially, you know, I, I've took something inherently uh, Mexican and I've put my British spin on it and I've took a little bit from Japan and a little bit from North America and I've put the European style and I've mixed it all up with, with some crazy characters and comedy. I've created Lucha Britannia and it's like the, you know, this great spectacle and it has performances and crazy characters. Not all wrestling is like that. Some wrestling is more uh, produced as sports and, and, Sometimes people want it that way. Sometimes people want it a bit more crazy. But the, the skill level involved, it has to be worked on and worked on and worked on. And that's why a wrestling school is so important. And that's why the London School of Lucha Libre has been so important for the last 10 years. And we've been so lucky that um, my uh, affiliation with all of the Lucha Libre legends from Mexico, like uh, uh, Elico de Santo, who's incredible, is like one of my heroes, but he's also become a friend and a mentor. And someone like Cassandro El Exotico, who is one of the, the greatest professional wrestlers who's ever lived. And if you don't know who Cassandro El Exotico is, please look him up because he is absolutely phenomenal. And much love going out to him right now, to Cassandro. And then, you know, going on the other end of the spectrum, you've got Will Ospreay, who's one of our guys that we trained from a kid. And he's like the, one of the greatest in the world. He's working for New Japan Pro Wrestling at the moment. And he adopts a, a hybrid style of Lucha Libre and the Japanese style and the American style. And he's just like a, a, a living cartoon superhero come to life. It's incredible. And I think so. Like you, you, you have like the a lot of things that they are happening and me as, as, as a Mexican, I can tell you as well. It's like, a, I remember when I grew up, it's like, um, I remember perfectly, all these kind of um, fights and how they become like a hero for all the children. Yeah. And that is also very important because in Mexico all the time they are highlighting because at school, I don't know, Roger, if, if that happened at your school, but it's like, you're a child, you're playing lucha at school. However, of course, something that we are going to say and highlight, and also in Mexico, they are saying all the time, do not practice lucha libre if you don't have the skills, if you don't have the training, because it could be very dangerous as you highlighted. So it could be an incredible sport. It's like what we have seen some of the images. They are acrobats that they are doing a lot of different things, but it's it could be dangerous. So while it's like, if you haven't practiced a, in a proper school, in a proper ring, when you can perform these kind of activities, don't do it by your own or don't try to do yeah. these kind of uh, activities at don't your try home. Don't at home, children. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and the other side, like one question, have you been in Arena Coliseo in Mexico or in- I haven't, that's my uh, aunt there, Greg Arena Barrett, Mexico? Just now. Um, sorry, no, I, I, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity yet to go to Mexico. And it's one of the things that I um, will be doing as soon as we're able to travel again and everything's cool after the pandemic. I would definitely be going there because I've got a lot of really good friends there and a lot of people that I, I love and respect a lot that have helped me out over the years. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, and I thank so for the audience and get her out. Well, of course, recommend you to, to go to these events that, well, Lucha Britannia is offering here in the UK in order that you feel engaged. But if you are going to travel to Mexico, also, I think so one of the great experiences is to go there and to enjoy that one because it's, it's a, and also, I think so, Gary, it's, it's something important to say that it's like, it's an event that is for the, it's a family fun. Yes. Yeah. And Lucha Britannia in itself was originally designed as a, an adult show, an over 18 show. We now do um, a, a family show as well and have done for several years. But originally it was, there was a, uh, a, a gap in the market. So we could be a little edgier, we could be a little ruder, there's a little bit of cabaret, there's a little bit of burlesque, there's a little bit of, you know, um, we call it cabaret siniestro um, with, um, you know, uh, circus performers and, and stuff like that, people. So there's a bit more kind of adult orientated, but we also do the family show as well. And I know Lucha, Lucha Libre in Mexico is very family orientated and obviously, um, people like Elico de Santo, they work with the government to produce safety films. And they are literally, you know, if, if Santo walks down the street, he is mobbed by, by people. You know, he can't, in, if he leaves his house in, in, his, in his gear, he is like <laughs> superstar. And that's why you need the mask. So you can be a normal person and go shopping and not get mobbed by people. <laughs> that's really what's behind the mask. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question because we, and we saw in those clips how women have been more and more female wrestlers. Cause I think, and I, I know I, when I think of Lucha Libre, I think of guys yeah. doing it. I don't know. It's just um, of, of male wrestlers. So what do you see as far as the future for female wrestlers? You, you can see there that that is actually yeah. Dia Rosa, who is um, uh, Nina Samuels in the WWE now. And that is Thunder Rosa, who's uh, in AEW and NWA in America now, uh, a fantastic luchadora. Um, Dear Blessa Rosa was uh, four times Lucha Britannia world champion against the men. And as four times champion, she's absolutely every bit as good as the men, if not better. And the women around the world at the moment, because uh, uh, a few years ago, we had a, the, the, you know, the, the normal idea that everybody should be trained the same way. If you want to be a wrestler, it doesn't matter who you are, what gender you are, what you identify as, where, where you come from. If you can do the physical stuff and you really want to do it, everybody should be taught the same. So then everybody gets the same level of education. Everybody gets the same level of opportunities. And it's took a while, but the women now, I, I would say, uh, not just on a par with the men, I think sometimes the women are better than the men. Really, that's yeah. That's that's because normally, yeah. That's like, the, I was gonna say like women but, are are our body like compositions different than men, and men are known to be like more mus. I hate to say it, sorry, but like more muscular and more upper body strength. So that's that's quite surprising. You can see I believe there. you though. <laughs> that's Thunder Rossa and Dear Blessa Rossa, two two really amazing uh, female wrestlers, and the word females shouldn't even be in there. They're just two amazing wrestlers. That's what we're trying to get at. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter your, your gender. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter where you come from. It matters your heart and how much effort you put in and how much you give to the audience and put into Lucha Libre or professional wrestling and how good you want to be. What's your drive? What's your motivation? You, do you want to be a superstar or do you want to be someone who, who dipped their toe in and just had some fun? That's fine. You can be either. You know, you can just be a fan and watch it or you can come training and get fit and healthy and make friends. Or you can go, this is for me. I could be, you know, I'm getting good. I could become a professional. This, you know, my dream, which is up here, maybe I won't get up there, but maybe I can shoot for that. And then people that had no idea that they could become professional wrestlers actually end up being very good and becoming really good professional wrestlers. And one question, Gary, is like in, in, in the Lucha Libre that we have in Mexico, normally we have two different gangs, as you were saying, the good guys and the bad guys. Rudo you know? and Tecnico. Yeah, exactly. Rudos and Tecnico, no? Yeah, <laughs> so we have these two different gangs in Mexico that, well, of course, it's like 
the technicals or the if you want to say like the technicians they are following the rules and they are like doing everything like El Santo for example that it was one of the icons that well it was following the rules and doing everything and we have these guys that they are rudos and of course they are more aggressive and sometimes they are jumping the rules yeah do we have something similar in in, in Lucha Britannia that we have these two gangs yeah uh, in general professional wrestling is called faces and heels so the heels are the bad guys and the faces are the good guys generally but there's there's such a you know times change people change and sometimes it's good to be rooting for the bad guy you know rooting for the heel so the rudos can become just as you know bigger stars because you want the bad guy to or bad guy, girl to win you know so yeah it's the same you're, t you're telling a story and that story is told sometimes in in black and white and zeros and ones and other times it's told in a in a complete spectrum of you know millions and millions and millions of different things and you've got lots of different ways you can go with a story um humans are very complex people we have complex brains and complex uh, ideas and we need input and the input you know sometimes you want is he a good guy is she a good guy is the bad guy what's going on uh, and then it switches on you and you're ah oh, and something unexpected can happen so you know being part of a, a producer and a creator of characters and uh, a, a trainer as, as well is teaching people the ability to have a, an alter ego and a character and not always give what people expect. In fact, don't give them what they expect, give them what they don't expect. <laughs> and then you can tell a really interesting stories with your bodies and with your characters. And, and well, now you also say... Sorry, Roger. Go, go, go. No, no, no. You, you say it entirely perfectly and beautiful. Because what we want here is the British audience sees this. This is a spectacle with so many forms, as you say, athlete, theatrical. You're telling a story and you have a evil, not evil, but you have villains or a good and bad, which is amazing. Enrique. Yeah, and sometimes those villains can be really over the top and cartoonish and pantomime and sometimes they can be very subtle and very harsh and very real and very scary and it depends on how you're telling the story and to which audience you're telling the story to yeah and and well here is like one of the roles that you have is sometimes you are the referee of this fight yeah so how do they treat you because normally in lucha libre in mexico the referee is the worst. <laughs> and of course, everybody's blaming the referee and they are saying okay. that it's not fair. That's, uh, that's Metallico, Greg Burridge right there, um, pinning somebody. Um, how, how they treat you? Uh, it depends. You know, sometimes you get pushed around sometimes you have to give them warnings. And then sometimes, you know, if, if you're in a tag match, one of the guys might be distracting you and getting your attention while the other guy's doing something wrong behind your back so the referee doesn't see it. The audience is seeing it and making a big noise and then you turn around, you haven't seen it and the, the audience are going, referee, where's your glasses? Where's your Boo. glasses? Yeah. Boo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's where the, the fun begins because the people, the audience get into, connected with the, with, with the characters and then, as a football, as a fan, as everything, you start to shout and start to scream. And then obviously you, 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 you explore yourself. I mean, in yeah. a good way. <laughs> Humans need to express that. We need to express ourselves, right? And we have lots, you know, in a day, um, many things can happen to really, really upset you and put you in a bad mood and stuff. You go to a Lucha Libre show or a professional wrestling show, you can vent all of that inner stuff that you've pent up you can direct it directly where you want to through shouting and screaming at the person you either love or hate in the ring. And it's really cathartic and it's really good. It's like a, it's like a pressure cooker for, um, for people, you know, going, whether it's going to the football, you know, millions of people go and watch football in, in Mexico, millions of people go and watch Lucha Libre live around the world. Wrestling is huge. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. There's many companies all over doing really good work. And there's some phenomenal wrestlers now. Like wrestling has gone into another another dimension, and the, it, it only works symbiotically with the audience. Without the audience, it's very difficult. And 
Gary, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna ask you to Gary, to Roger, and Whitney because also it's like I think so. Delian is asking something similar that I had in mind. It's like yeah. if you will be a wrestler, what would be your name? <laughs> <laughs> and also for you, Whitney, and for Roger. Yo, me, I would be the uh, the grandson of the Santo. <laughs> oh, come on, be original. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, no, I it's have just... one for you. I have one for you, actually. I will. I will I but actually, I'm you have one. You. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you would be, which would be your, your name, your nickname. Well, I don't know because I'm not really a Lucha Libre person. I have a oh, feeling your Mike knows what name. Well, <laughs> actually, yeah, for you, I will have another one. Yes, I will put it. Yeah. What is it? La Maestra Peligrosa. Yeah. Well, I was saying the evil, the evil teacher. Yeah, the, the evil, evil teacher. teacher. Oh, yeah. Says, yeah. says the evil student. <laughs> no, I will be. I will be Enrique the Charmer. Oh my God! Oh, what is it? Opposite day? <laughs> <laughs> it's opposite day for sure. It is Julia Charmer. After what you did in my class, you're not charming. You're evil. And your Royer would be, of course, it has something related with the. Uh, I don't know. The photograph monster or something like that. Uh, el, el, I don't know. El Gatito Furiosa. Oh my God, Gatito. <laughs> I've nice. got my yeah. name. I already have my name of, in the yeah. rest of the got the mask, yes. so, you know. You're Are you Gary? Me? Yeah. I'm, I'm retired. I only teach now and um, run shows and, um, you know. I'm, what would be your name? <laughs> if you be? use a name oh, now, what would I, be? My old name was yeah. Shiro. Okay. Shiro. Okay. Shiro. Okay. What How was did your you name? That one? Um, uh, I, I, my one of my uh, wrestlers that I really like from Mexico was called Super Astro. Do you know Super Astro? Yeah. Yeah. So Super Astro's mask, and I loved his. He, he's, um, I, he must be retired now, but he, he was very good. He had a great match. Um, with Blue Panther that was like best of three falls and it was just phenomenal I just saw this match and thought, oh god he's great I, I, yeah, I could identify with that character and I would, but I can't just copy him you know I can't just you know a, a, a good wrestler takes a little bit from there 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 you take you take from comic books you take from movies you take from other wrestlers and then you mold it together into your own and I really like Japanese wrestling as well and I really liked a, a Japanese wrestler called Misawa, who's sadly dead now. He's a phenomenal Japanese wrestler. And I was like, okay, like very, two very different styles, different shapes, different sizes. But I could identify certain things with this one and certain things with that one. And, uh, and I was like, okay, let's, let's push them together. And if I created a character for me out of those two, and it's Shiro Yoshida. So it was a little bit Super Astro and it was a little bit Misawa. And it was a... Um, a, a little bit rollable Rocco, who's a, a guy from Britain, from World of Sport, who's um, who's also sadly no longer with us. Who's another legend of wrestling, and it's just you 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 create this character, and, and I became like the the Japanese buzzsaw for a period of time, mm. um, and it it was purely because I had I'd created all my other characters, and and then I left myself till last. Okay, well that that. It's interesting. And, and also, it's like, uh, what are you doing now with COVID? Are you, again, going back to any show that is coming soon that people maybe they will enjoy? We've got some, uh, some interesting things in the pipeline that's going to hopefully happen uh, end of October, beginning of November time. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on some stuff. Hopefully we're getting a new premises to do the, the school very soon so we can start the London School of Lucha Libre back up again. Um, COVID has been terrible for the, uh, for the wrestling industry. Massively bad. You know, what other thing are you literally got someone else's head under your arm, by your face, upside down on your body? You know, it's like you can't, for, for the whole year, we haven't been able to touch each other or be within two meters of each other. So there's been no wrestling like that unless everybody's COVID tested and, you know, it's in a 
you have to isolate for two weeks. So only the big companies in the world were able to do that and to have their own little pods like WWE, New Japan, AEW, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, NWA just started back up again and just done their pay-per-view, which is really good. Um, there's, there's some really, really good wrestling out there. Uh, and you know, if people want to search for wrestling for Mexican wrestling, uh, CMLL and AAA, Triple A, the two big Mexican companies who are really, really good. Um, and you know, there's there's not just one brand. People need to sort of realize there's lots of different flavors. It's like ice cream. You know, you don't just have to have vanilla. You can have you know rum and raisin, or you can have uh, pistachio. There's lots of different flavors of wrestling. So. It's not what you think it is. If you've not experienced it properly or you think you know what it is and you used to like it, but you haven't seen it for a while, just do some research. There's a lot of good stuff out there. So, well, and, and actually just for the audience that they know is that, believe me that, well, it's gonna be, if you have the opportunity, go to, and you don't have any idea and you say, what is this weird thing? Go, try, you are going to love it. You are going to you you gonna oh, love it. This is stress. You're gonna feel completely excited. If you say like, but I don't know who are the wrestlers. Don't worry. Believe me that once they are in the ring, you are going to take one and yeah. you're going to support it and you're going to enjoy it a lot. So it's a really good fun. It's uh, of course we are going to be like uh, being in touch with you, Gary. You Noted know that, that well. Once it's coming back, yeah, we will have the opportunity to enjoy. Uh, the events uh, are the ones that you have presented previously in the previous years and well we enjoyed a lot and it was a lot of fun so uh, please let us know and I know that well Roger has is, is very is very close to you in that way so well it's like let us know we know that we can invite the audience and they can know more about this but if people they want to know more about Lucha Britannia how they can find more information about it it's luchabritannia.com and it's Britannia 1T two ends because people get their spelling wrong i don't know how but they do and it's the london school of lucha libre although we're not open at the moment we hopefully will be soon so um you know you you can find us if you want if you want to find us you can find us so there and are no excuses yeah yeah it's no excuses and if you haven't believe me if you are you have that that little thing, I said, oh, I want to know, I want to know, believe me, when you see a wrestling match, you're going to love it. Yeah. And also, if you're going to train, Mr. Gary Van Der Hoorn is one of the best here in the United Kingdom as a trainer. He's been doing, he's been trained, as he said, one of the best talents in the world. So thank you, Gary, for being with us. Thank you very much. It's really it's a pleasure. pleasure. And well, hope to see you soon. And of course, hope to have news in October. Thank yeah. you, Gary. Cheers. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So, well, you, you know more about Lucha Britannia nowadays. So, well, I think so, as we were saying, it's an extraordinary uh, event that you can go there and also you can participate and you can bring your family. And well, it depends. Of course, we will provide you all the information. It depends the venue, where it's going to be. But well, you, you will enjoy it, believe me. Or not, Royer. Yes, I, you know, I've been going to the luchas for already five years and believe me, every time is different and you enjoy it and it's real risk. It just is the adrenaline kick. So it's amazing. That's correct. Gatito Furioso. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to go to our next section and which is our next section Roger yeah well our next session is going to be to the stand I you see and you put me last week to do that por carretera por el río por el mar o nos vamos And well, for this section, we have our friend, Siram, who is located in Peru. But well, we're going to talk about Bolivia and this place that is just like uh, incredible. It's like uh, unbelievable to see it there. And well, we are talking about, well, first of all, how are you? 
Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to be here again. How is the weather there? I'm sorry? How is the weather there? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's freezing out here. It's about uh, 11 degrees at the moment. Oh, sorry. We have like 25 degrees now. <laughs> and we are <laughs> melting here. <laughs> Don't change that. The second you say that, the second I'll put it's the first, back down no, to 11. Believe me, the first time that I can do that kind of things, okay? So I have to enjoy this week. Yeah. <laughs> hey, for, for us, 11 degrees, we are in t-shirt outside. <laughs> <laughs> of course not, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> like, it's, it's a pleasure having you here, Siram, as mm -hmm. always. And I know that, well, we have a particular topic to talk about it. The dwell is like Uyuni South Flats. The dwell is like, and we would like to know more about the history about them. I don't know if you can tell us a bit. What is this? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> Uyuni Salarde or Salarde Uyuni, as uh, it's, uh, it's uh, more popularly known as in, in South America. It is uh, it's a massive or the world's largest uh, salt flat. And uh, the history goes back to some 5,000 years ago when uh, a lago Minchin, which is a lake Minchin, that uh, got dried up and then uh, this, this salt uh, flat, flat started appearing from there. So it got the uh, attraction, it became a popular tourist attraction, one of the most visited attractions just as Machu Picchu in Peru. And, uh, and, and, and it's, 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 it's quite interesting to travel around. Uh, the salt flats. In fact, I was I was actually a guide as well. I used to guide some tours in in Bolivia, so the uni as well. Yeah. Actually, they look like impressive. The images that we're seeing. Look yeah. At this one. yeah. Definitely. It's so, so for those of us who don't know much about them, where can you tell us where they're located, and also what's the best way to get there? And like, how long does it take? Especially if you're coming from like La Paz, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from, from La Paz, uh, there are actually, uh, uh, exactly to be precise, in fact, there are four flights, uh, two in the morning and two in the evening. That departs at around 8.20 and 8.30 in the morning and 8.20 and 8.30 in the evening. So uh, it's Amazonas, one of the airlines, and the another one is called BOA or Boliviano, which is the national carrier of Bolivia. Also, you can take a bus from La Paz, which is about uh, six to eight hours, depends on the road condition, how it is, because Bolivian roads are quite unpredictable and uh, buses do leave at night because during the day, you can never say, I mean, uh, once I was actually out and uh, I was going for the death road biking and uh, we, got, we got delayed because there was a strike and uh, the road, there was a big massive roadblock people you know literally there were like massive rocks in the middle of the road and uh, they were not allowing us to pass so uh, yeah most buses they do leave uh, leave at night from la paz and uh, get to uni at around uh, 5 30. so uni is a very very small town it's um, it's it, it mainly thrives on tourism so there's no, nothing absolutely nothing else apart from them so it's more like a jump off point to go to salar the uni and um, once you're in Uni, there are there are plenty of travel agencies, and uh, you can just book your tour. Uh, to and, and most tours, in fact, they start by around ten thirty in the morning to go to Salada Uni. And where is it located? Could you... Oh, it's in it's in Uni itself. There's a town called Uni. Right. It's yeah, but in, where in Bolivia? Oh, uh, it's in uh, southern Bolivia, closer to Chilean border. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And I, I would love to ask you something very important. When you have that effect of the mirror, is any particular season, times during the year, what's the best time to go? Oh, the best time to go uh, to see the uh, mirror effect. It's uh, during the monsoon. Uh, monsoon, like it doesn't rain as such, but the water that is below the solar flats, they start to come out. You know, and then this creates a mirror effect, which is called as the uh, largest mirror in the world. And uh, it's, it's best to go between November and March. Uh, every year you will get to see that. Uh, but it's, it's everything as it, as it has its own pros and cons, even the, the uh, you know, when you go to see the mirror effect, has got its own, its own cons as well, because, uh, you know, you have like almost like five inches of water 
and then when you when you're walking, uh, you know your your pants, your your trousers, for that matter, get sticky, and then you know you know it's it's, it's quite difficult during that time. But um, the best time to go is obviously I would say sometime in the end of March or beginning of April, because that's when it starts to get get dried up a little bit, and then you will get to see the mirror effect, but not that much of you know um, water at that height as well. But there is any particular time during the day that is the best time to be there, like maybe you will recommend? Oh, well, not exactly, because uh, um, the best time, I would say, is uh, during the sunrise and sunset. That's, that's when you get to see, uh, you know, a, a different view altogether of the salt flats. Um, and just want to add up, in fact, when, when we talk about salt flats, people just go like, oh, Bolivia, Salar of the Uni, that's it, no. There are actually quite a lot of other things to visit over there as well. So, for example, there's a train symmetry. So, this is a very, very unique thing because in Bolivia, uh, there were a lot of uh, trains which were built back in the UK. They were brought to Bolivia because they wanted to establish a trade relation with Chile. So, they wanted to ex export uh, all, the, all the salts and all the minerals from Bolivia to Chile. And then suddenly this project was called off. And then they didn't know what to do with the trains, so they just left it abandoned, um, you know, just, just across the salt desert. So the, it, it, it started rusting and uh, it, it soon became an attraction as well. So now when you go, it's like a hollowed out, uh, you know, locomotives, all with graffitis and everything. And then you go further into the salt flats and then uh, there is also a, a, a stone tree. So there's a big massive rock and uh, due to the wind erosion, it has taken a form of a tree. And uh, that's a unique place. And the one that you're seeing right now, it's called Laguna Colorada, or the Red Lagoon, which is also a natural formation where you can see the Andean flamingos and everything over there. That one, that, that one is like, I'm just uh, watching the images and Believe me, that is like, what is the experience? How do you feel there? Because also it's not something that is like, it's not a place that is crowded. How is the noise? How is the experience, the whole experience to be there? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's quite distinct, in fact. Um, um, when, I was a, when I was a tour guide, I used to, uh, you know, take a little time off during my day, just give a free time to my, uh, you know, the, the, the people that I'm guiding the tour. And then just go sit there, just enjoy the nature, get get connected with the nature, with the chirping sounds of birds and, and, and flamingos. So it's, it's quite a unique experience over there. I'm pretty sure. I'm just like, honestly, I'm in love of the images that you provide us because it's like uh, really nice. And actually the ones that you are walking and everything that they like, you took them from, from a drone. Yeah. It's like, Wow, it's like honestly, how expensive is the water? Oh yeah, it's uh, there. Are, there are actually three tours. So there's one the people who are having a short of time. They go for a, a one day tour, which is about uh, let's say about uh, thirty dollars or something. So which covers like the basic areas of the train cemetery and the salt flats. And how long it takes this basic one? How many hours is, is that? Uh, it's about it's about seven hours. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it begins at ten thirty and goes on to let's say four four ish. And uh, the the se the second one is a is a two day tour which takes you a little bit deeper. And the best one that I would personally uh, recommend everyone is to go f if you're going uh, is just to go for a three day tour because that's where you get to see everything. Plus, the best part is that you get to stay. In a hotel which is built entirely of salt blocks. Wow. So uh, there's a hotel called Samarikuna, which is a which is a very uh, interesting place to be. The the entire hotel is built of salt blocks. So the bed is basically they don't have this wood and everything, so that's actually salt blocks, and they've just put this uh, bed on top of it, and uh, the tables, the dining dining chairs, and everything. And uh, so you get to stay over there as well when you're going on a three day tour. And there's also an active volcano, which you get to see. And the Red Lagoon is actually quite far off from the salt flats. So it's actually closer to the Chilean border. So which is about, let's say, two days to drive, you know, to get wow. to that place. Yeah. Two so, days, two days. Yeah, two days, yeah. Which, wow. let's say, two days is, 
and 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 that's doable only if you're doing a three-day tour well, but i think so if you are traveling i don't know from uk going to bolivia well three days i think so it's more than like yeah. worth it to be there and also as yeah. you were saying all these places that we are seeing and also just listening the birds listening the the, the including the the, the the wind that well it's like mm -hmm. all the noise involving you and it looks very quiet and normally it's quiet or they are like a lot of crowds sometimes like a tourist that they are like just coming a lot of uh, i don't know like a bus or something or like what do you recommend oh no it's it is actually quiet over there i mean there aren't much noise because um you know like like I said, ten thirty the tours they depart from uni, but that's an average time. So you know, in Latin America, we call it as a Latin American time, which is not exactly ten thirty. <laughs> Sometimes it goes for like ten forty five or eleven or whatever. And then different people they go on a different routes as well. So some people they start from the train cemetery, and some people they go to uh, straight off to the salt flats and end at the train cemetery. You know, doing a loop in a different in a different route. In fact. And uh, so, so you won't when you, when you go to a certain certain uh, spot, you won't have many many people or from different uh, tour companies at the same time over there. And these tours normally includes like I don't know foods and uh, and everything, or the meals, or or they are like different places that maybe you would recommend that well people they should try something in particular in that area. Oh no! In fact, uh, there aren't anything um, you know inside. I mean, within the salt flats, uh, I had I had a random question from one of the travelers who asked me if there is an ATM. Um, oh my uh, god! <laughs> 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 so, yeah, just right uh, over there by the pink flamingo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's in fact uh, there, there's actually nothing uh, within the salt flats. Um, in fact, in in I was in uni. Let's say about. Uh, uh, four or five years ago, the first time I went over there, uh, I had to. If I had to get a haircut, I had to drive like three hours to the nearest town called Potosi, and that's where I had to get a haircut. So it was, it was that remote, and uh, things have started to develop there little, little by little. So, okay, so do you so, recommend that people so basically, take cut their hair in advance <laughs> and also <laughs> withdraw some cash from the ATM before I, going there? Oh, absolutely. Imagine yeah. it. Imagine, imagine the tourist. Yeah, an ATM, you see two days that way. <laughs> and for the yeah. cuts in the hair, two hours that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like, okay, be prepared. <laughs> I I was re I was reading something too. This is kind of random, but um mm -hmm. I was looking at like some other images while you were talking about it. Flamingos are just some of the birds. It says it has over like 80 species of birds, yeah. and three of them are pink flamingos mm -hmm. what are some of the other like more common like birds that you see because i know a lot of the pictures we see more of the flamingos for well, the bird uh, lovers and lovers out there well majority of them the flamingos um, in fact uh, really so, so, yeah so there are there's like uh pink flamingos you have uh, andean flamingo then you have chilean flamingo so there are different uh, breeds of flamingos and the best thing about this is that you won't get to see them um, like like all the flamingos, all different breeds of flamingos at the same spot. So they have actually inhabited in, in certain zones. So there, there's a dedicated zone when you go, you get to see uh, pink flamingos. And then you go drive a little further, you get to see the Chilean ones. So it's got its own uh, like, like, a, like the zone where you get to see. Um, there's another one called as this. It's not. It's not exactly a bird, but then um, it's an animal called uh, viscacha, which which is which looks like a rabbit, but um, okay. which one? Uh, hmm. Viscacha. Okay. No. It's an Indian. <laughs> it's an Indian yeah. animal, so it looks a little bit like a rabbit. Oh and, yeah. And uh, also uh, vicuñas, and uh, you don't have alpacas and llamas, but yeah, vicuñas you can see them quite a lot um, near the Red Lagoon. And these flamingos that you were talking about, well, if, if, if you have the opportunity to travel or if we have the opportunity to travel there, is there, we, can, we can see the flamingos during March or an April, or there is a season that, well, maybe they are migrating to another place. So it's like, which one is the best time to see all these images that we're watching? Well, uh, they are there around the year. I mean, uh, uh, it's a, since it's a place where they inhabit, so they're there around the year. Right. 
but during uh, November to March, when when you know supposedly it's a it's a it's a monsoon season, so you you don't see them quite often, you know. So they they try to you know hide out into different locations and and they don't come out that often. So and also during the day, uh, let's say at around eleven between. 10, 10 to 3, 10 in the morning till 3 in the evening, you won't see much animals or birds over there. That's because it gets really hot. Mm. And there have been instances where I've seen like, uh, you know, thriving birds are tr thriving for water and they can't get water and then they just, you know, collapse and die over there. So, yeah, so you won't. And where are they going? Where are they going, the, the animals? Well, they, they're just there. <laughs> But it's like I, I I'm just thinking about the flamingos. Where are the, what happened with them? So they just fly and oh well yeah they, they actually they, they have kind of this uh, you know uh, caves over there, so they okay. kind of hide out within the inside the caves, and then uh, they don't tend to come out much between ten o'clock in the morning till three in the evening. Okay, so they go for a nap. During that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it's quite hot. Yeah. yeah. And also, well, I have a couple of comments here that well, it's like for yeah, example, sure. Gary Dancy, she's saying that I would love to go there. Um, oh, well, uh, Matteo Lobon is saying, great, my best friend Shiram, and he says, Congratulations, Shiram. It's like we're talking about Thank the you. uni, so flat. Um, and also Elvieta, well, she's saying that well, really extraordinary place. Uh, it must be a profound experience to go there. Uh, also, Gabriel Aguilera, she's saying, looks awesome. Uh, Abhijit, well, he's saying, hi, Sri Ram. Yeah, he's saying, mm -hmm. greetings hi. to you. Um, <laughs> and, and, well, also, it's like Hector Benitez, he's saying, Mi hermano Sri Ram, saludos desde <laughs> Bolivia. Hector Benis, sorry, Benis. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. well, we have some, some of your fans here. And, oh. uh, well, it's like, honestly, it sounds like a good opportunity for people just to... Uh, to travel to Bolivia, as we were saying, it's not only some particular places. And well, we have spoken before about Bolivia, about uh, different traditions that they have. But I think so. The landscapes that we are watching, they are mm -hmm. just something that well, with backpack ways, of course, that well is something to well, they can they can try it, right? Yeah. yeah. In fact, and, and yeah. Uh, so yeah. just just to add up, uh, Bolivia is the cheapest country to travel in Latin America. Yes. So it's not expensive at all. So that's that's like the cheapest one. So um, I would say you get you get uh, hotels and uh, for like let's say fifteen dollars a night, a pretty decent one. And uh, the food is, food is also quite cheap. And they do have like a good variety of Bolivian food to try. In fact. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, so it sounds like a really good opportunity. And uh, sure, um, if the audience, they want to know more about your travel experience and the places that you have visited, where they can visit you or where, oh, yeah, where they, they can, can find more about you. Well, they can uh, check out my uh, blog, which is backpackways.com or uh, simply go through Instagram. Also find me through Backpackways or Twitter through Backpackways as well. And uh, also if they do have any questions or want to plan a trip to uni, feel free to write to me. I'd be happy to help. Well, that is, sounds like a good opportunity for everyone that we are just like waiting to, to the, this lockdown will be lifted, and also we can travel and start enjoying all these, yeah, in, in, incredible places like this one, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we will contact you. Yeah, hopefully we can go soon. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That would be, that could be great. So. Thank you very much, Shuram. We are sharing also for the audience is like where they can find you. Uh, I mm -hmm. just share the uh, uh, your website on the mm -hmm. comment section. So thank you very much and have a good day there in Peru. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Bye bye. So well, it's like yeah, you know, you have a new destination, and I know that we here in the Latin America show we are just creating just that conflict in your mind in order to decide which places <laughs> do you yeah. want to visit. Honestly, I'm, I would love to have like, I don't know, at least six months traveling around all the places that we have watched in this show that they are like, wow, it could be from beaches, uh, trying different food, 
go into different restaurants, this landscape that we can enjoy, the culture, the ruins, everything is like a, also horse riding that we have seen. It was like, well, we need to put our eyes in Latin America. You know, there's so many things. I mean, yeah, maybe we, you need, we just need to create a crowdfunding in order that the audience, they can provide us some support. <laughs> okay. And we as a team... We, we do the program over there, there huh? and yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And broadcast <laughs> the show from Latin America just to be closer to the... And, and to show to the audience. We are here imagine me. Uni. Imagine me with four four telephones connected, trying to get the signal over there. Oh, <laughs> that could be good. Cool. That could be good cool project. No problem. And yeah. also switching. Yeah, yeah. it's also Different, switching. Like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. As well, that could be interesting. Also, uh, Mahu, who is saying saludos desde Peru. Thank you very much. Uh, Liana, saludos desde Londres. Uh, we have, who else do we have? Um, ah, I forgot to ask. Siram, what could be his name if he will be a wrestler? Oh, oh God. awful. Fire. Remind me to, remind me to ask him. But Ram, that would be a good question Ram for the, the, the Traveler. Ram the Traveler. Ram the Traveler. Could yes. Be the, but it has to be like the exotic traveler or something. Uh, like exotic, I, I like that. Imagine with a mask, the exotic traveler. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. It's like, a, <laughs> uh, okay, well, the evil teacher is like, you cannot say the evil teacher and then the gatito. Okay. The gatito, awesome. what? Gatito furioso. The gatito furioso. <laughs> yeah. But I would like to ask look. to the audience, it's like, let us know. <laughs> look, you... look the face of the teacher. Look the yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just oh, like, oh. you know what? It's also like a tough time of year because it's June and I'm just kind of <laughs> over teaching, but I forget on this show, it's like, you know, I have two teenagers here as well. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Will it you thank, you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 19. 19. Eso es lo que dijiste. 28. 28. No hay bronca. 28. Está bien. Déjalo en 28. Es más, te doy hasta 30. Órale, dame 30. Oh, sí. Con todo ese pelo gris. Sí, exacto. Mm -hmm. This is just inheritance because my family, they have this issue. So it's more about that. It's not that I am old. And actually, my friend, um, Abigail, he told me that I should try just for men. That if, if he said that this works very teach well. teach you a word. It's called la negación, denial. <laughs> yeah, that, no, no, no. And it's like, actually, it's like, I would like to ask to the audience, like, please share with us. If you will be a wrestler, what would be the name that you will use? Yeah. What would be your nickname? <laughs> yeah. And also that would be for Abhijit, for all the people that they are. It could be in English or it could be in Spanish. So don't yes, worry, you can put the name. Pauses. Si pudieras elegir un nombre, ¿cuál sería? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nothing. Never mind. It's grammar. For It's Spanish grammar. It's very advanced Spanish grammar to say, like, si pudieras elegir un nombre de lucha libre, ¿qué nombre escogerías y por qué? I don't know. Never, never mind. Well, the, the porque it's, it's a little Not bit porque, more. Like fine. It. Okay, Mr. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. The one who writes quizzes with questions Enrique, are difficult you for can, the audience. You can call me Enrique the Charmer. Yeah. No, Enrique, Enrique the Charmer. No, no. no. Evil Enrique student. The I, 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 I think. Enrique, the, the, greatest the, student, student, the greatest student. I think. Both they got great names. Including teaching, because it only goes downhill from there. <laughs> Not funny. So we go music <laughs> or we go to the. So yeah. So meanwhile, the audience they are telling us what is going to be your name. Uh, that one yes. is like also Liliana. Tell us what what's the name that you will choose. Also Gabriela Aguilera, Abigail, yes. Elvieta, Karen. Uh, Mateo, let us know if you have the opportunity to choose any name to be a oh. wrestler. What could be? Ah, uh, Lily Martinez is here. Hi, Lily. Uh, so, well, Lily Martinez, uh, everyone, let us know what could be uh, Enrique El Jefe. You see? Yes, no, no, but not for me. Oh, <laughs> it could be your, your nickname, Vieta. No? Oh, oh, well, if you want, you can put us a nickname. No, put us what? A nickname. okay, okay, guys, let's let's <laughs> vote as well. I have an addendum. Put your name for Lucha Libre and then put the name you think Enrique should have. Great charmer, evil student. 
That's not charming at all. That's scary. No, but the, scary. How is like a picture with the wrestlers normally, Roger? Yeah, Roger's got it. Roger's, yeah. It's like they are like fighting. They are like want to hold you. It's like that. I don't know if we have oh, something in the archive, Roger. Pictures for the. I just imagine. I just imagine we with me. You know the old days with an eraser and a pen like this. Oh yeah, <laughs> eraser and a chalk, no. a piece of chalk. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of those rulers and yardsticks. You know they used to hit yeah. the fence. Oh my God, which ones? <laughs> the ones made of wood or the metal one? Whatever one hurts the most. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Next, next, classes or music? Yeah, okay, okay don't, yeah, music. Don't do that. Liliana Woodchess, Godzilla Girl. Oh, come on. Yes. Godzilla Girl, okay. <laughs> and uh, Linda, also tell us, Linda, I can see that you are watching us. So, well, let us know what would be the name. Ramona, also red card. No, well, you are like, oh, you're red card. No, it's like you are like telling me it's red card. No, uh, but anyway, it's like, let us know what would be your name. Meanwhile, we go to some Bolivian music. Courtesy of our friends from Hawaii. Yes. How are you ready? Arriba! Salai, Generación Bolivia, UK. Así se baila, así se goza. Una vueltita, zapateadita, con emoción y mucha pasión. Sa, sa, salai. Aires no me hacen temblar Tacita de buen cimiento va a permanecer Las flores después de invierno vuelven a nacer Tacita de buen cimiento va a permanecer Las flores después de invierno vuelven a nacer Puedes irte, puedes irte Que no necesito tu falso amor Necesito tu falso amor, mejor me quedo solito, libre como el viento y sin dolor. Mejor me quedo solito, libre como el viento y sin dolor. Puedes irte, ya no te necesito. Sin ti, la vida es mucho mejor. Adiós. Sí, 
encuentro tu falso amor Mejor me quedo solito Libre como el viento y sin dolor Mejor me quedo solito Libre como el viento y sin dolor friends from Hawaii. So if you want to find more information about them, it's very easy to find them. I'm, I'm going to share actually here on Facebook uh, in the comment section, the YouTube channel, where you can listen more of their music that well designed. Thank you very much to Edwin uh, for providing us these couple of videos, but also they have more videos in, in their channel. So actually, like I strongly recommend you that well, you can watch them. I'm just copying the link not to with all of you uh, some of the videos as well if you are interested to watch more about this fantastic music from Bolivia and from our friends also we have very good names I don't know if you have seen there in the comment section guys <laughs> Enrique El Sabio <clears throat> El Sabio uh, he yeah, that's, that's okay. really good yeah I, I, didn't, I didn't put it yeah but yeah. the only Whitney, problem is, well, they put like a great and everything so it's like a, that's not good <laughs> Whitney the Whisperer. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Love. And I think so. Rodrigo Alarcón is talking about which would be my name that is saying awesome. Okay, Enrique. Uh. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Roger El Sonriente <laughs> is oh. saying the bueno. no? I think thank, no, thank you. Like, Uy, la cachetada, ¿qué le dijo? Ah, okay. She's talking about the, <laughs> the, the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's like it. Uh, Gabriela Aguilera is saying that her name would be La Indomable. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. That's, with a, good That's a good Linda, one. That's a good one. And Linda is saying that she will be Lethal London. Oh, wow. Ooh. Be careful Ouch. with Lethal London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's... Roger, before we go, we want to know the reason why you were not. Our before that, episode. before that, before that, it's witness. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> ah, before it's that, it's like, sorry. It's, That's sorry. how bad of a student he is. He doesn't even remember when he has class. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Before going with Royer, let's go with Whitney. We're going to put our microphones on mute. This is fun for you. It's fun for me. All right. Um, okay. So in all, in all seriousness, I am going to go back and change the slides. So, but before I do that, the, it's been a really long time since we've addressed slang from Bolivia. So I'm actually going to recycle some slang that we've seen from a while back, our first episode, long, long time ago. And so I'm going to do a little bit of recycling because there's only so much slang, new slang one can come up with. So I'm getting, so this is all pure review. And some of this, well, you guys have seen before. And if you've been following the show for a while, you have. But let's review. So here are a couple expressions. The first is que pintudo, and that means how cool. So we've talked about cool being, I mean, well, the next one, capo, also means like, well, I'll get to that in a minute, but it's very similar. We've talked about bacán, bacano. Um, um, I think it's eh, chévere, guay. There's so many words to say cool. And another one is like que pintudo. And whenever you say See, whenever you say K and from something like as an exclamation, it means like how. So que pintudo means how cool, que bueno, how good, how, que malo. Uh, then you have capo. When a persona capa is like someone who's awesome or the best. Okay. So I don't know if I would use this example with my, no, you know what, Roger? Eres el capo. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Enrique, you give me those evil looks. You see. You see how well that'll go. All right, um, we have estar yesca. So, una, oh, sorry, I've skipped one. Um, 
Oh no, I have them in different orders in my slides than I do over there. Okay, so está yesca. And that means to not have any money. So if you were to say, no tengo mucho dinero, um, that means like, yo estoy yesca. That's how you would say it over there. And, and dinero, plata, money. And then um, the next one is una chela, just like in Mexico, una chela is a beer, which you would see in that picture that kind of cut off. And then a couple more, only a few. Okay, tener mucho nieque, that means to like be, be brave and to someone who takes a lot of risks. Like una persona valiente, una persona um, que toma muchísimo riesgos, okay? Es, Una persona que tiene mucho nieque, someone who is brave. And, and it's interesting, in Spanish, in most Romance um, languages, there are lots of expressions that in English we would say to be, um, but in the Romance language, you use the verb to have. And you see this with a lot of basic expressions. This is slang, but basic expressions like tengo hambre, tengo sed, tengo suerte, tengo, like I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm lucky, tengo ganas de hacer esto, I want to do this, um, tengo que irme, like I have to. And and aside from the last one, they all mean something different, but they all take tener. And this is the same thing, just in slang, tener mucho nieque is to be brave or to take risks. So it doesn't translate literally. Um, which actually most most of these words don't, so it's perfect. And then two more, no, three more. <laughs> um, we have la trancadera is like tráfico, tráfico. So instead of saying like hay mucho tráfico, you could say hay mucha trancadera, which th there's a lot of traffic. And that's pretty fitting for tonight's episode because um, we just talked about how there could be strikes or roadblocks or even traffic. And that's why sometimes maybe taking the bus um, in Peru is for longer trips could be a little risky. Then we have trucho. This is an adjective to describe something as fake. Um, it's like, so something that is, um, isn't good. Like if you bought something, it's trucho. It's like something that's fake. And then the last one is the yapa. And we've learned about this before because you see it in Peru, surprise, it's nearby, um, where this word also exists. The, la yapa is when you get something a little extra. So for example, if someone's like, makes you like a smoothie and like they fill it up, but there's just a little left in the blender, they pour that in, that's la yapa. It's just a little more than you were initially supposed to get. And that's it for tonight's almost forgotten segment of Making Spanish Simple. Oh. Oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, like, well, I can see that while they are like, we're putting like a, for example, El Jefieta, she's saying that, well, she would be La Bruja, you know? Oh my Roger, God. Yes, I have the red hair. Huh? I have the red hair. Redheads were known as <laughs> Las Brujas. So you should be, <laughs> so you will be the red hair witch or how? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you will be that one. For uh, La Bruja de Gabriel, Gabriel Aguilera, Aguilera, I, say, I can imagine how bad, like, what you are then. If I'm considered La Bruja, then... La Bruja de Rojo. Pelirroja. Okay, La Bruja Pelirroja. Please, sí, sí. let's concord those. Yes, let's agree those adjectives. Okay, sigue. Well, sigue. actually, it's like, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, like, I, 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 actually, like, for example, uh, Gabriel Aguilera is saying that for Royer, it could be happy feet. That would be your 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 name. Also, Gabriela Aguilera is saying that well, maybe for women yeah. to be Latin American lover. Latin American lover, yeah. For who? For you. For you. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. They are saying that. It's not me. Okay. No, okay. that's like I... the nicest one of all the names. <laughs> so, um, Oh yes, God. of course. It could be La Bruja Polaca, El Svieta would be, yeah. Because yeah, it's Polish. yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, well, it's like, now, Roger, you were absent last week. Hey. Yeah, well, Show I wasn't us. here last what week. What were doing? Uh, I was working at the London Design Biennale with the Chilean uh, pavilion. So, I invite everyone here in London, if you have the opportunity to book your ticket for the London Design Finale. I think, I, 
I've been there in a few years, but this year is amazing. We have two two Latin American pavilions. One is from the Chile, which I'm gonna show some images that I was doing, and also is from um, <clears throat> from Whitney from the, from where we say. The, the other sorry, I was looking at the comments. I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> oh dear. Well, first of all, first of all, let me show you. Bicentennial. Yeah, no. Okay. You lost. <laughs> anyway, let me show, let me show you what I was doing when I wasn't here last week. Okay. Bicentennial. Yes, I said that. I was listening. Yeah. At Somerset House, I... <laughs> Tectonic resonance is about Thinking design from the perspective of geological ages um, or deep time. We work with the stones and rock to connect the rituals of humanity with the global supplies of raw materials and the tectonic history of Chile. Well, we invite the visitors to uh, interact with the with the with the pavilion, and these screens react to the to the sounds of the stone. So they uh, they resonate with us. Um, so the idea is to play the stones and to to create these resonances. Well, looks interesting. Oh. What is going to be this? This is the Chilean pavilion. It's going to be from the 1st of June till the 27th of June. So you have plenty of time. Book your tickets. And also, we have also, uh, from Latin America another pavilion, which is amazing. So hopefully, I, I can talk more about the next program from Guatemala. So it's two countries to visit. They're amazing designs. You can miss this. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds good. Also, we're still having uh, some people that, well, it's like, well, oh, first uh, of all, it's like, I think so it's a good experience to go there. And where, where is, where is it located? It's located in Somerset House. Very easy. Central London. You can even walk there from uh, Covent Garden or from Charing Cross Station. Just 10 minutes walk and you can go there. I mean, uh, one of the things, really cool things you can go there, you can go to the main patio, we go, because now is the, is the forest designed by uh, S. Debling, which is a designer of, uh, of a, a few scenarios from the most famous singers around the world. So she designed this. She said, uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the original uh, construction of the Somerset House, they say it's never gonna be a, a tree in the patio, but now it's a forest. And it's amazing. You can go there to those cafeterias, have a coffee and listening, just listening the nature and the trees is amazing. Very recommended. You cannot miss out. Thank you, Royer. I think so sounds interesting. So well, it's like book your tickets in advance. And I think so you can have a, this uh, extraordinary experience with all the stones and everything that well, you can go there and visit all this uh, pavilion that well is uh, good. And, and also, well, hopefully we will have the images later on the, to have for, from Guatemala, you know, just to show to the audience. But if you have the opportunity, book your tickets as soon as possible. And it's this kind of activity that you can do now that we are in a little bit the lockdown. And also we have here some names as well. For example, Abhijit is saying, I would be El Rey, Rey de Masala. Okay. Uh, El Rey de Masala. Rey de Masala. Uh, uh, Gary, it's actually a good one. Gary should be... Uh, 
But I don't know which one. It was the first one because she said, oh, la hechicera del hospital. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> la hechicera del hospital. Ah, caray. <laughs> You see, everyone is, 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 is <laughs> everybody is related with the dark side, if you can see. Yeah, it's like everybody is like yeah. thinking about evil or yeah. something. The only yeah. one that is like thinking to be in the technical side, following the rules, would be the inner wrestling Enrique, is coming out. Enrique the charm. Oh. <laughs> Enrique the charm. <laughs> oh, well, okay, okay, we need to be the sexy Mexican. No. Nah. Which one do you prefer? No? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. It's just you that I have like this team that they are supporting me all the time. Yeah, thank you very much. ¿Me Prefiero la verdad. <laughs> the very sexy Mexican. Yeah, nah. that, that's like said scary. Did it work? <laughs> and one more okay. thing. One well, more thing before I, uh, before I leave. Now, obviously, from people are uh, from Mexico and from Britain, there's a UK Mexico art competition called Camaradas. We mean means friends, partners, comrades. So you need to buddies. Yeah, is uh, the Embassy of Mexico is promoting these uh, art competitions? Just uh, type uh, to www.embamex dot s r e dot g o b m x and then you can find more more about it so all the rules the last entry will be on the 18th of june that's it okay. i think so let me go uh which one you said www uh, and by max no one listens to you roger and by yeah. no 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 it's like because i think so it was a little <laughs> bit difficult Embamex.mx, right? Oh, no, yes. I'm sorry. It's like... I will put the link MX in the Facebook. Okay. Yes, yes please. Yeah. That is exactly what I was trying to do. Anyway. Okay, perfect. Yeah, well, I think so. Thank you very much for all the people that they were like in the show tonight. I would say thank you to all the people that they were participating in our chat, to Liliana, to... Um, Gerin, Elsvieta, Ramona, uh, Linda, and all the people that, well, it's like also people that we have in Peru. Uh, why they are saying that? El Macho, sorry for the title. Why? El Canoso Furioso. Oh, come uh, on. Enrique. Yes. Early gray hair. <laughs> oh my God. So it's like, oh, come on. The other, now everybody is yeah. against me. So, what's going on? <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> Who put that? Who put that? I'm gonna invite you a, a, a drink. Me too. Who was? <laughs> Which one? Oh, my God. Who was? El Canoso Furioso. Furioso? That was Liliana. Liliana, yeah. Liliana, you have. I invite you a drink whenever you want. Yes, the well, best. Also, you can invite <laughs> to Gabriela Aguilera because she's saying early gray hair. Yeah. The good thing I like <laughs> the early part. I think so. We should yeah. put in capital letters that part. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gabriela, for that one. But well, thank you for... for this. This is going to be like my new background, all of like the names, of Enrique. Like, <laughs> we got. <laughs> this this, <one>. Listen, <laughs> we got you. We 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 can. We, I'm going to send you with Gary, and then we already have your name. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, I think we can put your name right now in where it says <laughs> name Enrique Helista. Hey, listen, listen. Let's do a, a website already. Uh, we can do a website. Uh, uh, <laughs> Look at his name, Enrique the Charming. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I That's, That's my name. Sorry. Oh. Like, yeah, it's normal. So, yeah. Come on. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's time to say good night. So, thank you very much, Roger Alarcón. Thank you very much to everyone. A lot of Latin Americans winning in sports, everything. Just turn up next week to know more about it. Thank you, Roger. Willy Nochereno. Nothing left to say. Have a wonderful evening. And we will see you next week from the Latin American lover. Ah. <laughs> How can I change that? So well. mm -hmm. so you're going to take a screenshot and you're going to put it on your face. We can never
tienes que de charming. Uh, a ver, ok. You haven't seen it. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes, I, I know why. Yes. Roger told you? me that. And I think it's the background. And, and Roger told that? me, Rodrigo, yes, that my hair looks like a little bit blue. But no, honestly, I, I haven't dyed my hair. Still, I don't know it's the light and I don't know what's going on with the light. What do you and say? Also, I have a, what do you say? issues with the green screen. The other day, what was my know. name? What was my name? Gatito, Gatito what? Furioso. Gatito Furioso. Are you going to update that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and my useful that too. Oh, he means business. Excellent. So, well, it's like, yeah, we have now different names. So, thank you very much, everyone, for being tonight with us. Remember, the Latin America show is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. London time. And see you next week. My name is Enrique Gelista. Have a great week. Bye-bye.